Hello and welcome to the March Outturn podcast from the Scotch Rock Whiskey Society. Coming up. La 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 la. Are you filming this bit? <laughs> what are our exercises, Callum? Oh baby, baby. That perception of Irish whiskey is triple distilled and very kind of tame and yeah. gentle. Yeah. We have a kind of shared heritage with Ireland. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm. That's a belt up. I'm Richard Gosselin, editor of the Society's Members magazine, Unfiltered. Delighted again. You're back, Callum, for more. You just can't get enough of me, Richard. Can't get enough. And uh, our his faithful members can't get enough. It's got nothing to do with the fact that I work here most of the time and I just so happen to be readily available. Okay. March, outturn, uh, lots of good stuff coming up again. We're going to dive into a selection of bottles, crack some whiskey open, have a wee taste. Sounds good. But, you know, we're continuing our uh, series, I suppose, of you know, some ex. ex explainers for society members mm -hmm. about some different aspects of what we do and you are a member of the whiskey team and we wanted to talk about what does the whiskey team do so the society bottles all these new whiskies mm -hmm. every month yep. there's an endless variety all these different styles of whiskey and the whiskey team is responsible for serving up these whiskies right yeah so how does that work <clears throat> well, um, it's not a simple answer to that, I suppose, because no. it's, there's, there's a lot of different um, ways that we go about it. Um, originally, it, it would have been very simple because, you know, we were founded as a single cask, spe you know, specialising single cask, and it only really was single casks. Um, but these days, we like to get a bit, lot more experimental, and we actually have a bit more freedom to go and do other things. But um, you know, as long as the, the quality is there, then then and the, and the flavour, then we're we're absolutely happy. Yeah, it's the most important thing. Um, but I suppose back in the day, as you say, maybe there was more mature stock of whiskey available, and the, and the, in the early days of the society, certainly, you know, we're going back to the early eighties, yeah, where. There was a slump in the whiskey world. There was a whiskey loch, and distillers were basically sitting on this stock. And the society was founded at a time that it could go and get mature whiskey. Yeah. And it didn't have to do anything with it, really, apart from put it into a bottle. And single cask was a new thing. Yeah. So that was enough. But times have moved on. Yeah. So we need to do more than just source mature whiskey. They, they struck oil and they didn't even realise yeah. it because. It was just quite a simple concept, wasn't it? Well, they got they, they tried this whiskey and they were completely blown away by it, and they thought, well, let's need, let's try and get some more of this. Let's share it with friends, and it kind of grew from there. But you know, as you mentioned, this is the 1980s. It was all about blended whiskey. You know, that's what people drank. It was yeah. blended. Single malt was was around, but it wasn't really a thing. It wasn't really till the 90s where yeah. single malt really took off, and, and and it's grown and grown massively over the years. Um, so the fact that they were drinking single cast whiskey in a yeah. time where people were drinking blended whiskey, um, yeah, it's quite quite, yeah. quite fortunate in some ways, but also remarkable, yeah. Yeah, but the days of going out and sourcing mature whiskey that's ready to bottle, that's harder to find. It's also incredibly expensive. So how does the society work now to ensure that there is a constant offering of wonderful whiskey at the right ages well in a lot of different ways like yeah like you said they would they would just been offered a cast that was ready to go whereas that's not always the case with us now and we're kind of always in there's no set way that we do it. we're we're interested in ev everything you know there's no deal too small or too big i suppose but we have it's all about the variety the variety is the most important thing that we do um so that gives a bit of flexibility to, to be able to be open-minded to, to, to say what, what, you know, what's on offer here. You know, if you might have a couple of casts hiding away that no one really knows about, and, you know, we want to we want to try those as much as we want to try, you know, looking at fillings from from your your stills that you're doing every single week of the, of the year. Yeah. You know, um, uh, but we do still buy mature whiskey, but we also buy um, young whiskey mm -hmm. and, and fillings where. Quite often, the, the the whiskey will stay at the distillery because we want it to develop the characters of that distillery. But mm -hmm. equally, um, we might want to, um, to bring it back to our warehouse. Mm -hmm. We will do that at some point. Just, just there's no set way of doing it. You know, right. every single deal is different, and that's what gives us this variety. But how does the society whiskey team work with new make spirit, for example? Mm. So you know, there might be mature whiskey that's out there, mm. but more and more of what we're doing, I suppose, is taking control of the maturation process. Yeah, and 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 the, the, the fun thing about the current climate, uh, there's lots of new distilleries as well. So 
um, you know, when they're setting up, they they they, they want to sell you know, their, their spirit because you know they haven't they, they kind of need to, which means we get access to it, and there's always loads of excitement about new distillers, new numbers that get released, and some of these distillers are absolutely fantastic. We've got some coming up which I, I can't mention yet, but I'm very excited about, and I'm sure members will be too. And it's not obviously all single cask. I mean, predominantly what we do is single cask. But again, as the spirits team, I suppose, has developed the, sorry, the whiskey team been rebranded recently. It has been rebranded, yeah. I need to remember. Uh, but it is now doing more of its own creations. Uh, you know, we in-house, we call them heresy because when we started doing anything that wasn't mm. single cask felt it was heretical. Well, what are you doing? And we had to explain that to members. But we're now up to, well, 20. we're going to talk about one was of the new heresy releases. Yeah. So it's been a series which uh, I think started in 2017, but has become po a popular offering. But it's all about creativity, right? Yeah. I mean, it's funny when you're talking to the society, to somebody who's experiencing it for the first time, you obviously, for, the forefront of what we do is single cast whiskey, we specialise in that. But there's so many other things we do and that's a massive part of it now. And I think the, the heresy range, our small batches are absolutely fantastic. I mean, for so many different reasons. I mean, they, they, well, one, uh, they look different. So they've yep. got these lovely, the concept's a lot more fun. Yeah, we've got some here. Well, there's, here's some, one, of, one of the recent ones, Scarlet Marzipan, came out just at the end of last year. We I did think. that one, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a um, wee tipple of that. Very nice. So the, yeah, they stand out, you know, from yeah. the rest of the bottles. Um, um, well, because they're small batches, there's actually a, a bit more available because, you yeah. know, sometimes it can be frustrating, you know, because single cask, once it's gone, it's gone. But these, there tends to be a little bit more stock, so there's maybe more chance to get a hold of them. We'll talk more about it uh, because we've got a new small batch heresy release coming out in March. So we'll talk about it then. Still to come, they say women have got a better sense of smell yeah. than men. 57.9% ABV. That's that's amazing, 50 pounds for that. Yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic drum for 50 quid. Yeah. We've got a special series we'll touch on first, and I've got a couple of these bottles here. Uh, ve very nice <coughs> collection. Uh, and these are from a special tasting panel we did last year to coincide with International Women's Day. And this month, we've got a total of five bottlings under the International Women's Day label, mm -hmm. right? So special labels, special releases. Do you know anything about this? Am I putting you on the spot? To be honest, most of the time, when I was back in the venue, I would know a lot more about what was being released. Now, my job is to, to source it. So I've got a lot more focus on what's coming in as opposed to what's coming out. And actually doing these sessions with you is very helpful for me because it reminds me what we've got, what's going on. Yep. And quite a lot of time, I'm discovering for the first time with you what we've got coming out. So yep. well, equally excited about it as well. It's an interesting one because what happened last year was we formed a all female tell us all about it, Richard. I can tell you because you've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> uh, we've got an all female tasting panel, and that was convened to kind of mark International yep. Women's Day last March. And they went through uh, a, a bunch of whiskies and they selected five. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they have now been bottled. And that panel of uh, all women panel. They did the tasting notes, they did the evaluation, they did the bottle names, they did everything. And so we're seeing the results of that now. Uh, we've got different bottles that are going to different markets. These yep. two are going to be available in the UK and in the EU. There's one which is specifically for our members rooms. All right. And then there's a couple that are going to the nice. international uh, society. Markets. We did a we did a, actually in the, in the venue. Well, before this role, I was the uh, venue manager in Glasgow. And we did a international day women's tasting. So we had um, we had some people with some women from the company who came and got involved, and we had a few people who work throughout the industry, and they all kind of came together and did this tasting yeah, and is. brought some of their own bottles together. Yeah. Well, they say women have got a better sense of smell yeah. than men. Yeah. I don't know how. And that's, that's why really you get so many female master blenders. Yeah, quite yeah. a few. These these are the results of the International Women's Day tasting panel. Brilliant whiskies and a, a nice project, and actually this is helping to support our Whiskey Foundation, which is a not-for-profit uh, organization which supports and empowers women 
in the whiskey world, set up by Becky Paskin, if you know Becky. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, and some of the profits of our International Women's Day bottles are going to be going directly to the Our Whiskey Foundation to help support all the good work that they do. Excellent. So, brilliant whiskies. I mean, look at that. What have we got? 28 year old uh, from Distillery 30. This is 30.123 liquid riches. Uh, this is the one that I, I had my faux pas over the, the location of the distillery because uh, there's two places with the same name. Is it? Yeah, number 30. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to say what it is? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, but there's two. That that distillery. There's another place in Scotland in in, oh, fi in Fife that's yes. got got the same name. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. So it's mean. not a Fife distillery. No, I know that. It's not a new town in Fife. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Thirty-five point three eight two twenty-year-old from one of the society's favourite distilleries. I think you know. Yeah. You know this one. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Know no. that is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's not in Fife. <laughs> Exalt is from an Exalt that also bought into a first fill XPX, but you know, you know that is going to be sensational. Yeah, right. But we're not going to crack those open today. Uh, we'll move on. We've got another offering from uh, Distillery 157, which we introduced. Was that two months ago? Relatively recently. The first one we did. Yeah, two so, or three months ago. Yeah. So yeah, this is the point two. So this is the second release from Distillery 157, which is the first French distillery that we have released from. Yes. Uh, always getting a glass out, which means we get must my, be opening it. Let's get a glass out. <coughs> dry throat, Callum. Me too. Yeah. I've, I've, I've not, I've, I've had a cold. I, can, I don't even, I don't think this whiskey is either going to help it or make it worse. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Because the first bottle was a, was a belter, oh, wasn't it? Oh, we, we really liked it. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, this is like, we're not pretending here. This is the first time that we're trying these. Yes, you know, because. But I was very keen to try bottle number two from this distillery. Yeah, so it's um, seven years old, first fill Oloroso butt, and this is the deep rich and dried fruits flavour profile. It's called Cinnamon Chili Chocolate yeah. Cupcakes. That was. Well, it's a good name because immediately I'm getting that, uh, certainly getting the cinnamon, a bit of chili. Yeah. Chili chocolate. Yeah, it's got a kind of strawberry jam kind of, mm. mm. but does have a spiciness to it as well. Yeah, lovely. Okay, let's go in. Mm. It's like dark chocolate now. Did I, did I, <laughs> chocolate cupcakes, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm getting a kind of Armagnac-y note. Maybe it's just mm. a it's nice. transport it's, it's to France. It's quite sophisticated, isn't it? Refined. Mm. I would like to add a wee bit of water to that, actually. 61% or something. It's, it's, a, it's a real skill adding a tiny bit of water to a very small um, sample of whiskey. Oops. Yeah, that's all right. Mm. It's, yeah, it's perfect with a wee bit of water in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting kind of pears and lemon and... Yeah, kind of licorice as yeah, well for me. Sugary sweet. Lovely. With a wee spicy edge to it. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, that's a belter. Yep. We can safely say. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good stuff. Right. We thought, uh, you know, we offer whiskies at a very wide price range. But I thought this month we would pick out a couple which come in at £50 each. You know, £50 for a single cask whisky. Yep. You can't complain about that in terms of value. No, I think that's fantastic value, yeah. Right. So shall we try these? Yeah. Start with this one. Sure. This is obviously peated, so we'll do the deep rich and dried fruits first. <clears throat> okay. What have we got? We have got this one's called Espresso Martini and it's from distillery number eleven and it's point four seven. Right. Also uh, the deep rich and dried fruit fruits flavour profile. Good. Um, and it's bourbon and then it's had an extra maturation in a second fill Oloroso Hogshead. Mm. Look at the nice colour on that one. Yeah. Do you want is that enough? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. What's the age on it, Callum? Did you say? Well, did not say. Eight years old. Eight years old. Yeah, it's pretty dark that. for eight years old. Fantastic. But, uh, yeah. Okay, nice. That'll, oh. I guess that implies that there's been a, quite a strong sherry uh, influence in this then, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Strong coffee Ooh. influences, like a coffee liqueur. Yeah, it's like. Mm. 
It's quite floral as well. Yeah. Getting the kind of melted Jaffa cakes. It's got a kind of smooth centre to it. Yeah. Prickly, you know, kind of a wee bit ed around the edges, but it's quite different actually. Eh? Yeah. I think that needs That's a nice. wee bit of water as well. Want a splash? A tiny bit. Right enough? Yeah, perfect. Mmm, more kind of orange coming through for me now. I wouldn't say it's, it's as full on as you'd imagine with the colour of it, in terms of sherry. Yeah. But you know, it's bourbon and sherry, but it really does... Oh, sorry. You really can taste the elements of both of them. Because it's kind of it's smooth, but it's also got that kind of spicy edge to it. Yeah. It's quite co complex, there's quite a lot going on there. There is. It kind of changes every time you try it, I really, I really like that. Yeah, tuck into Scottish chocolate tiffin. You ever eat tiffin? I uh, have, but not... I, lo I love tiffin with a sherry cask matured whiskey. Oh, I, I like chocolate and cake or yeah. anything with whiskey. Oh, just, it's such a great combination. But this is chocolate tiffin in an old fashioned ladies hair salon. Well, before being offered an espresso martini with a blueberry muffin. Well, there you go. I was getting a wee bit of a kind of floral note, but it's also, yeah, there's that kind of, that kind of um, hairspray kind of perfumed. 57.9% ABV. That's, that's amazing. 50 pounds for that. Yeah, that's a fantastic drum for 50 quid. Yeah. That's a good name as well. It's a very good name. Okay. Up next, I think Scotland are partly to blame for the downfall on Irish whiskey. Yeah, well, yeah. I know, but distillery it is, it's 105. Did you just know that what? off the top of your head? What? 105. I knew what distillery it was, I. But you didn't know that other distillery was actually in Speyside. Oh, we're going to go back to that again, are we? Oh, it's okay. So our other £50 offering. we will get a couple more glasses. We do, but um, they're not matching glasses, I'm afraid. I'm going to ask you to say that name, see how you get on. Brilliant Bullion. I'd go for more like a bouillon. Bouillon? Bouillon. Yeah. A brilliant bouillon. Yeah. I don't know what a bouillon really is. I have no idea. We should probably have looked it up before, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to Google again. Oh. Is it like a French dish? Say hello to crispy bacon and seated bread. Dun Duncan. Get on Google. Can you look up bouillon? Bouillon. B O U I W -L, L O N. What's a bouillon as in like, you know, you were going to. It's like, like a soup stock made from stewing meat, fish, or vegetables in water. There you go. I was on the right track. Yeah. Showed my ignorance here. At least I had a I was going to say something silly there, so I'm glad that you um, jumped in there. Sorry, do you want more than that? Yeah. Um, before I said it, because Richard is all over me when I say something silly. <laughs> <laughs> right, so obviously a very different creature in terms of flavour profile. And even just the colour looks very different. light. Cask maturation. Very light and golden. 122.63 Brilliant Bouillon from a Highland distillery. Highland silly. Yeah, just in the Highlands, really. Just one foot in the Highlands. It's the Willy Wonka of, of distilleries. It so is. They have a few different numbers and they do a lot of different styles of um, whiskey. Yeah. This is typically the peated one. Yeah. Eight years old and uh, just first fill ex bourbon barrel maturation. Sounds good to oh. me. Oh, I mean, as soon as you open that up, you're getting. I always find when you when you read something, you never know whether you got there because you, it's yeah. been implanted in you. Because I've got the bacon thing. Yeah. Smoky bacon. Yeah, definitely. It's like pork scratchings. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, it's barbecue. It's, what do you call it? The, the burnt ends of, uh, you know, the US barbecue, they do the burnt ends. You ever try that? Not sure. Burnt ends of what? It's like a... Bit of, bit of beef or beef. brisket or something. I'm not sure, no, you I've know, never had that. Nicely spiced and marinated. Sounds good though. Oh, amazing. Mm. You know the Americans and the barbecues. Sensation. Mm. Mm. It's delicious. Peat, peat free it's delights. Pretty punchy on the peat though. Yeah. Definitely one for the for the end of the night. It's... Yeah, that's the thing. You want to leave this till You've you've had your sherry cask. It's not it's not whiskey. it's not like medicinal like your Isla kind of whiskey. No. It's it's a different kind of smoke. It's yeah. uh, it's it's a powerful barbecue smoke. Yeah. But yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. It's actually, really nice with water. I get a lot more kind of um, fruity flavors when I add water. Yeah. Lemon. It's kind of yeah. custardy. Are you cutting through the smoke, the bacon notes uh -huh. a wee bit, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So it's actually yeah, very very nice indeed. Brilliant. Well, fifty pounds again. 
uh, to me would be a, an absolute winner. Yeah, for sure. Right, okay. Uh, let's come back to our latest small batch release. Small batch 23, shimmering silk. Are we going to drink, drink this one? Yeah. Have you got any more glasses? Uh, are we out of glasses? Out of glasses. Uh, you, I did this before to Alan Wood, and he did such a good oh, job. Oh no! He did such a good job of talking <laughs> while I went off to get a couple of glasses <laughs> over to you, Cal. What do I talk about? I talk about you. Talk about him. You like? I want oh. a lot. I don't know why, but it seems a lot more sort of intimidating sitting here by myself um, with you two fine gentlemen staring at me. So what we have here is the Shimmering Silk, which is uh, a release that we are extremely... Well, that was very quick, actually. You'd think we could rustle up more than six glasses. Um, we don't have a lack of glasses. We just weren't, weren't prepared, Richard, and I blame you entirely. To I thought you were going to take ages. I was just starting to go for it. Right, there. OK, carry on. They were looking at me saying, oh, God, what's he going to say? Where were you? Where was I? I said, we're very excited about this release, Richard. Yes. Shimmering Silk. Yes. Um, so this Why are we is, so excited? Well, we are excited because this is going to be a, a first for a few, a few different reasons. We're going to be re releasing this in time for St. Patrick's Day. But yes. this is the first oh, look at that. Um, single malt that we have released as part of the Heresy project. Yep. Um, it comes from the, the Dunvilles brand. OK. Um, over in Ireland. Yes. And they've actually, um, so I think Kai and Yuma over there, uh, so I'm not entirely sure how it came about, mm -hmm. but they created this f for us. So, you know, we, we were talking about how much control we have over the whiskey and how we like to experiment and do our own thing and all this sort of stuff. But yeah. actually, this is one which um, they have created for us. Okay. Uh, and it's based on, similar to their um, Dunville's uh, brand. They usually release it 10 years, this one's 11, so they've never released it 11 years old. Right. It's probably got a similar makeup in terms of it's bourbon and uh, Pedro Jimenez, but yep. um, it's a small batch, so it's a combination of a few, a few, quite a few casks. Yeah. But I know a lot of people who are very excited about this, especially people yeah. in, in the in the spirits team. Um, mm. cause well, a, I'm excited about it as well. I uh, I tasted a Dunville's ten year old. I've never tried it. Pedro Jimenez maturation. Oh, you did. And it was lovely. Really, really nice. I thought it was fantastic. So actually, I thought you were going to say but there. You were kind of building up. No, the no, there's no but. <laughs> and they did a beautiful label as well uh, because they've they've resurrected the brand, right? Mm. And Dunville's stopped producing whiskey almost a hundred years ago. Yeah, well, I think nineteen thirties. Yeah, well, it originates back to the eighteen hundreds. The original. Yeah. And it used to be a huge brand back in the day. So yeah, they yeah. Kind of resurrected this um, massive historic brand. Belfast. Mm. Belfast Distillery, right? Dun Dunville's. If you say so. I think I say so. Uh, but hasn't been around for almost a hundred years. No. So the brand, the name has been resurrected uh, by the, the team at Eklund. Eklundville, yeah. Right. And they've recreated this. Yeah. And the, and, and the whiskey I got had a beautiful label, but the whiskey was magic. And this is very, very similar. But as you say, this is 11 years old compared to the 10 years old that they were producing. Yeah. And it's a small batch, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, specially sourced. And they sourced everything. They did casks. everything, you know. They they sourced their own casks. Um, yeah, they created yeah. just for us. Yeah. Okay. So let's try it. Let's try it. It's great nose. Oh, it's like it's like marmalade. Mm. Mm. Oh. I mean, if you're looking for a PX maturation, mm. that's got that. Short, yeah, because PX richness. is a sweet style of sherry, so it, it just does, it's a bit softer, um, yeah. it's quite well rounded, but it's, it's a bit more easy drinking. Yeah, um, it's like very fruity. Yeah, dark fruity. fruit, but definitely more of the sweeter style, like blackberry kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lovely fruitiness combined with that uh, sherry sweetness. So it's, it's going to be a lot of, well, it's quite an exciting resurgence in the Irish whiskey scene. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, if I'm being completely honest, until I started this role, it wasn't really something that I, I knew too much about Irish whiskey. I'd heard a little bit about it, but you know, there's so much going on in the, the terms of what's happening in Scotland and elsewhere in the world, it's kind of hard to keep up with. Yeah. But uh, the Irish movement is, is huge. It's massive. And it's, and it's I think I think everyone's going to see a lot more coming out of Ireland. Yeah, no, some really exciting things going on. Mm. A kind of rediscovery of Ireland's yeah. distilling history, yeah. rich, rich yeah. history, which was almost completely lost. Yeah. I think at one point they were down to like three working distilleries in Ireland. I'm not sure entirely. Yeah, it was, but... like, it was, the industry was pretty much decimated. 
but in the past 20 years, I mm. suppose, it's really started to come back to life. And it's fantastic to see places like Echlinville, yep. which only dates back 2012, I think, Echlinville. I think 2013, was... they started doing the production again. Ah, yeah. So this is like one of the first. It's a lot of, there's a kind of wave of new distilleries opening up in, uh, in, in Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's really, really exciting scene. And, and, they, and they don't have. You know, we talk about single malt Scotland, but they don't have the same restrictions as as, mm. as we do. So they they can become even more experimental. You know, yeah, with their pot still and their single yep. malt, the pure and, pot still stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's that kind of that perception of Irish whiskey is triple distilled and very kind of tame and yeah. gentle. Yeah, that's but we've got this. We have a kind of shared heritage with Ireland you know, more so than anyone when it comes to distillation. You know, yeah, do not say that it was invented in Ireland. And perfected in Scotland, the, yeah. an Irish person might not be <laughs> very happy with me saying that, but yeah. I think generally that's considered the truth, isn't it? Well, I mean, in terms of the coffee still and continuous distillation, yeah. which the Irishman uh, coffee invented it, did. And the Irish industry thought, no, 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 that's not for us. That's that's not pure enough for what we are doing. Yeah. So the Scots took it and you know I, w went and ran with it, and as a result in terms of the bulk production mm. that Scotland mm -hmm. saw, it, it pretty much killed off what I Ireland think, was doing. I think Scotland are partly to blame for the downfall on Irish whiskey, yeah, well, yeah. because Absolutely. We, were, we were releasing whiskey and uh, uh, calling it Irish, right. sort of lower quality whiskey, you know, okay. sending it out to America and branded as Irish, uh -huh. and therefore uh, Ireland got this, this sort of unfair reputation for being yeah. sort of inferior to Scotch. I think it was definitely some skullduggery, some some yeah you know i mean this is and that's during prohibition and there was all sorts of other, other challenges at the time as well yeah and we're just fortunate for scotland that uh, we came out on top yeah, and, yeah. And we've, we've grown and grown from there but we're all pals now we're all pals now yeah aye. but that's uh you not you're not irish am i irish aye. no i'm not irish no, i thought you were irish are you irish no no okay but i'll drink irish some, of, some of my family lived in northern oh. ireland for a while okay but that's it scottish and moved to northern ireland and came back again that's it didn't like it I mean, I was I wasn't born in Scotland, but I won't, let me not mention that. But all right, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, dig into your family background another time. It's quite simple. Uh, so fifty percent, and with our small batch releases, we do uh, we do present them at fifty percent usually. Yes. Yeah. So you know they're not cast strength. No, it makes it makes them a little bit more accessible, doesn't yeah. it? Um, yeah. You know. Well, it's yeah, it's approachable. Uh, it's a different style of whiskey, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah, think yeah. they're they're really good for somebody who is trying, to, you know, discovering whiskey, or kind of new to whiskey, because they are so accessible. They're easy going most of the time. Yeah. Even the ones that are kind of more heavily peated or sherried, they're, they're still a bit more easy going because you know single cask and not just because of the the ABV, but you know, quite full on. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, they're just well, a lot of fun. I absolutely love yeah. them. Yeah. So do I. I I find them great drinking. Great for sharing, and you know. Have you got any other favourites from the, the Heresy range? Well, um, yes, I loved Tabanco type. I actually time. liked that as well. It, it, it won an award that one. The, mm. Well, it, it it was great, and again, a lovely introduction to Sherry Casper. It was one that I didn't. I wouldn't. I would. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did like it. Because mm -hmm. I think I maybe I probably said before that I, I like Sherry, but not like. And just it just sounded like it was going to be really full on, but it wasn't. It was yeah, nice easy and, uh, going. And I've got a bottle of Scarlet Mar Marzipan at home yeah, as well, nice. which I'm, you know, nursing with the occasional wee dram as well. So no, great stuff. So that is Shimmering Silk from our small batch series, out in time for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Well done. There you go. Right, good stuff. One more bottle to mention before we go, Callum. Oh. Uh, I should say this is like hot off the bottling line. Uh, Craig, can I hold it? Yeah, you can hold it. Oh, wow. Craig just uh, popped in before we started recording to say this has just come off the bottom line and it is our latest Vaults Collection release. Callum, take it away. Take it away. Well, I actually quite like just being handed the bottle and I have no, <laughs> I've never seen it before in my life. Um, but I, I can tell from looking at it. Well, I know what the distillery it is. It's 105, so that's Speyside. We Did have, you just know that what? off the top of your head? What? 105. I, uh, yeah, right. I knew what distillery it was, I. Okay. Just don't always. Yeah. I'm getting rusty as I'm not in the venues anymore. Because you yeah. didn't know that other distillery was actually in Speyside. Are oh, we going to go back to that again, are we? No, it's okay. Move on. I confess that. I wish I hadn't now. <laughs> I'm just showing you my vulnerable side, Richard. Sorry, I only know. Well, you didn't know what distillery this was? 
wasn't wasn't the one that I've got in my, you know. No. Um, so we've had a few releases from these before, and actually, I've got one of my friends who's a society member, huge society member. It was in the venue all the time. This was his favourite distillery. If, if we ever release anything from them, especially older uh, releases from this um, distillery, okay. he's all over it and okay. he loves wow. his whiskey. He'll be looking out for this one. How old is that? This one is 35 years old, right. almost um, as old as me. Yeah. I'm 36, if, if in case you're wondering. Um, <laughs> why are you laughing? I'm not, I'm not going to get into ages. <laughs> um, uh, this is a sweet, fruity and mellow flavour profile, which is actually a flavour profile which I really like. It's refill bourbon. Um, which is exactly what you want in an older whiskey because you don't want the maturation to be too full on. You want a nice, gentle, uh, slow maturation over an extended period of time, and that's when you get that's when they, they fall into the vaults collections yeah. because they're just complex and yeah. sophisticated. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be nice, easy drinking, but it'll have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and forty-eight point one percent. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. obviously with a bit of time, it's starting to go down a little bit there. So that yeah. I, you will probably wouldn't even need to add water to it. Yeah. Um, I'll have that, thanks very much. Okay. Yeah, cheers. I uh, don't think that's how it works, Callum. But We never uh, opened the Vaults Collection. Yeah, Vaults Collection 105.44, Honey Jam, and that's also coming out in March. That's a good name too. It's a great name. I'd love to crack it open, but I think we've got to Not give like that to. back. No, oh, too bad. Uh, right, Callum, uh, yeah. that's us. Anything else you'd like to add into the chat? To do with whiskey? Month? Anything you want to get off your chest? I felt like we were, earlier on there was something we were going to talk about we didn't talk about it. Well, save it for next Missed month. Missed my chance. If you get if you're invited back. If I'm invited month. back, yeah. Right. Cheers. All right. Cheers, Richard. Right. Thank Enjoy you your whiskeys. Enjoy. Slange. Can we sit up and forward a little bit? So what? Like this on the edge? Sit how you're going to sit. <sighs> Don't yeah, yeah. push me because I'm close, close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep them going, going under. under. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. All right.